Hello everyone, thank you for joining us and welcome to the third session of the Sealed Rooms webinar. My name is Shelby Hansen and I'm a product specialist at Excel Air Systems along with my valued colleague here, Steve Stott. Together, we are here to give you the information you need to turn your dream into a reality with total environmental control technology for a greater understanding of planning, creating, and operating your next generation facility. Beyond offering superior equipment, consulting, technical information, and resources to producers, Excel Air Systems also provides support to research and development professionals and help with product storage. We understand the concept and logistics of what you're trying to achieve and strive for innovation that allows you to allocate more time to other aspects of your business development. In fact, what really gets us going in the business side of the cannabis industry is we view it as containing the biggest education points that entrepreneurs need right now. Having witnessed what's transpired in the industry over the past 15 years with boom and bust cycles within Canada and the United States, we've detected an underlying theme. But we aren't sure if everyone else has been getting the memo. Therefore, today, in part three, we will be covering the fundamentals of building a profitable cannabis business. With that established, we'd like to begin by taking a look at success in the cannabis industry. What does success look like? In some ways, this question is designed more for the dreamers, or those who are in the beginning of getting into the industry, because there's a big element of self-assessment depending on one's own personal vision. At the same time, there are definitely some commonly held goals, and we'd like to channel our wealth of knowledge and expertise while offering our perspective from years of industry observance, in order to help you meet them. Obviously, a highly valued measure of success is to put it bluntly, striking it rich. This goes hand in hand with building a great business, but getting there is no easy path and there's no easy money. That being said, any business that offers a desirable product or services that people love and can't go without will do fantastically well. It happens at all levels from small scale Etsy stores selling homemade trinkets to mega cap companies like Apple selling 200 million iPhones a year. It's important to think about the cannabis production from that mindset, rather than just assuming people will pay anything since it's a new market. Much like during the dot-com bubble in the early 2000s, entrepreneurs in the recent and ongoing green rush raised money based on ideas, without necessarily having any tangible product to show for it. All that initially seemed to be required was having something cannabis or THC related in the company name, and everyone was in. Since then, we've seen actual quarterly numbers for multiple years. With this and the boom-bust cycles, certain things have ended up taking much longer than initially assumed, and everyone's expectations are now much more grounded. Maintaining a more realistic outlook and staying focused will allow entrepreneurs to build a business methodically. By putting the proper business plan and people in place, they will ensure that day-to-day -day operations can continue to run smoothly by trusted employees and partners. This will help them achieve self-sufficiency and thrive as the market continues to organically grow and adapt to current trends, incrementally getting them where they need to go. Success may look like building a brand that customers want to associate themselves with. This is a bit more challenging in the cannabis industry as there are a lot of laws restricting advertising, especially in Canada. Some positivity is to be found in this though, as it generates innovation by forcing businesses to be unique in their approach, since their hands are somewhat tied. When done right, it's quite feasible to build a brand that customers find, love, and want to be associated with, which is always a recipe for success. Another pathway to success might involve building a world-class facility that removes much of the downside resistance and sets new standards, so that the product and brand are always in demand. This means looking at where developments are headed to incorporate technologies into the branding. What's best is to try and think a few steps into the future and not just do the bare minimum, especially in the conceptual stage, since the importance of planning cannot be underestimated. More than anything, success is best illustrated by making and sustaining a good living in an exciting industry. Not only does every entrepreneur want to do well financially, but they also want to see their ideas come to life, from a visionary concept to a finished product that is well liked by customers who desire to be associated with it. Visualizing success is an important part of the thought process, but it's only the starting point. 
When establishing and running a cannabis operation, maintaining a professional mindset is key to achieving your desired outcomes. That means treating it like a real business. Treating it like a real business. The biggest point we want to get across is that in order to operate a profitable cannabis business successfully, you have to view it with the same professionalism and manage it with the same discipline that you would any other legitimate business. This includes the approach taken to product quality. While this concept may seem quite obvious to many, from our observations, it's not what everyone seems to be doing. At least part of the reason for this seems to be because many of the people entering this industry have come from a gray market background. With these smaller scale growing efforts, generally one or two man operations, making 100,000 to 200,000 a year, while offering the flexibility of getting up at the crack of noon. They maintained operations that may not initially have been completely legitimate, but have now been transitioning to a fully legitimate status. When transforming from these quick flip cash cycle operations with no protocols or oversight to real companies complete with changes in profits and margins in business, some individuals have been just kind of blazing through the process. While the cause of this oversight is understandable, after all, it's new and exciting, what must be understood is that these operations have to be regarded as a real business with a lot of real expenses and real competition. Fortunately, there's little cause for alarm or regret, as the legal cannabis industry is still in its early stages, with potential to remain as one of the most exciting markets for at least another decade or so, not just on an immediate loco scale, but globally. Various major industry overalls have already begun to take place, each time acting as a catalyst by getting everyone excited again and sparking something new. Observing the way things are systematically going, we expect the high mark to probably be in about eight years' time, two more presidential elections from the most recent one, by which point the United States will hopefully vote to legalize cannabis at a federal level. This will be game-changing as the United States market continues to be looked at as an international economic leader. Overall, cannabis is a polarizing industry in which everyone is strongly opinionated, Many people even hold sensationalized or romanticized visions based on dramatized popular cultural depictions, resulting in differing false perceptions. Yes, there are large-scale facilities with plants as far as the eye can see, and the product is worth thousands of dollars per pound. So there's potential for making a large amount of money, but it's just like any other successful business, so your margins are going to be similar. The greatest determining factors of your success will be your processes and protocols. In other words, how are you going to go about doing everything? Which can't just be some quick exchange transaction. Systematically, you will have to invest large amounts of money into machinery and packaging. You will have to hire people and set up departments. It's a real business. While this may predominantly evoke concepts of those larger corporate facilities, there is still space for smaller scale growing operations. For example, much like in the beer industry, where the market is mostly dominated by corporations producing cheaper beverages, but independent craft breweries are also essential components. Smaller, heavily focused lifestyle brands are needed on the fringe of the market in the cannabis industry. This means new strains and different options, which if successful are often then later acquired by the bigger companies. Some lifestyle brands can even break through and become the it product, even if the product itself may not have much to do with the lifestyle portrayed in the branding. As long as there is a common interest and customers feel a connection, the product can fit into the lifestyle. There is a significant potential in the industry for such brands, but in order to gain market share, their average current level of professionalism must be increased. With regard to market share, the majority of the cannabis operations roughly consisted of 90% small to mid-cap companies and 10% multi-billion dollar mega-cap companies, like Canopy Growth and Aurora Cannabis, which own 90% of the market. In the case of the latter, their problem has been their compulsory focus on the paper chase. What do we mean by that exactly? Well, there are a few different ways to build a business. One is that if a business continues to accelerate and show growth, the market wants more. For example, if three facilities are open in one year, the pressure is there to open four in the next. The business becomes caught up in this continuous cycle, spending much of the money earned and raised through its stocks. 
Since they've shown that they can buy growth, which the market encourages, shares are then bought and sold at a higher price. As a result, they sell more equity in the company, raising funds to build more facilities. Initially, this seems like a great cycle, since the business is expanding and greatly increasing its economic presence. The problem with this rapid progression becomes apparent if nobody stops to question its continued sustainability, or wonder whether they are metaphorically headed to where the puck is going, or just where it is currently. As some of these corporations opened up multiple large greenhouse facilities to such sizes as 1.1 million square feet, when the cycle set in, their quarterly inventory numbers reflected that in the domestic market, they were only selling 30% of what they were making, leaving them struggling to sell the other 70%. Even with their international efforts, selling to Germany and other economically prominent countries, they were only exporting about 3,000 kilograms in a year, while producing 300,000 kilograms in that same period. With that, and the whole Canadian market being only approximately 500,000 kilograms, businesses were left with over a year's supply after the first year, and almost two years' supply when halfway through the second year. What's the shelf life on all of this surplus product? There are some differences in opinion among consumers with those less refined expectations, may think that if the cannabis is perfectly dried, packed, and immediately frozen, it's acceptable for just over a year at most. However, more particular connoisseurs are strongly opposed to such methods, insisting on their desire for fresh cannabis produced in the last month or two without any possibility of staleness or deterioration. Assessing the situation, despite these companies having the money and the market share, the market rejected them. Consumers opposed what they deemed to be a high price for an inferior product, especially when compared to the variety of the lower price, superior quality products that continue to be available on the black market. Despite seemingly encouraging headlines about massive lineups outside the doors of cannabis dispensaries nationwide on opening day, much of the buzz surrounding the legal market quickly dwindled. As months passed, they were still running out of product and short on supply. Now with all the aforementioned surplus, dispensaries still had a lot of basic low quality cannabis in stock. So what exactly were they running out of? Premium high quality cannabis. Why? Because none of the large corporations were making it. They were all producing lower quality product that few consumers actually wanted. They wanted a premium quality product because although more expensive than that of the black market offerings, its consistency and quality is good or better. If you're a cannabis connoisseur or a frequent consumer, it's only natural that you'd want the best of the best and are willing to pay more for it, but not for the bottom of the barrel type product. Faced with these market preferences and the Canadian government's contractual stipulations allowing dispensaries to sell the product back if it doesn't sell within a year, the large corporations incurred dire losses, writing off as much as $100 million worth of product. The underlying problem was that they refused to accept what they were really competing with, the black market. They essentially tried to pull the wool over consumers' eyes, severely underestimating the fact that most consumers can understand the difference between good quality cannabis and poor quality cannabis. As an adaptive move, the logical choice for these inferior cannabis producers was to get into the manufacturing of alternative cannabis consumables. With this range of products, the quality level doesn't matter nearly as much, since it's simply being mixed into food or beverage. As a legal cannabis consumer's market is still in its early stages, there is more of a challenge in educating consumers and building up that market, which takes time. Blinded by arrogance, these corporations essentially positioned themselves as too big to fail and didn't take the business seriously. Neglecting customer expectations, failing to ensure product quality, Cutting corners in the production process and growing in a greenhouse or outdoor spaces resulted in major deficits. In contrast, smaller businesses growing in sealed room facilities with higher quality equipment have consistently yielded a higher level of THC content per pound, resulting in favorable sales and carving out a specialty niche among consumers. Altogether, this really reinforces the stark difference that treating a cannabis operation like a regular business and being mindful of the future can make in the industry. With that preemptive understanding, you can take the appropriate measures to ensure that you are on the right path. Ensuring that you are on the right path. 
and our experience of maintaining close working relationships with entrepreneurs throughout their journeys, we've accumulated a great deal of industry knowledge and insight. As such, we would like to go over some of the most important steps that you can take to ensure you are on the right path with your cannabis business. At Excel Air Systems, we often emphasize the value in looking at ideas realistically because many individuals, if they've never started a business before, aren't putting in enough thought into actually conceptualizing their vision. They may have had great ideas, but it's a lot of work to take an idea and actually turn it into something. For that reason, creating a realistic business plan is a crucial step in the process. The more you figure out ahead of time, such as if your facility will be adequately prepared for the inevitable inspection, or if you plan on getting into processing, or if you will be subcontracting that aspect of production, the more smoothly everything will go. Then once you've demonstrated to investors and business partners that you have the ability to plan systematically, you'll be able to acquire funding, talent, and resources. Effectively, creating a realistic business plan also involves putting a considerable amount of thought into determining the product's market fit. Most producers, at least initially, have naively thought along the lines of, I'm going to sell cannabis. Who doesn't like cannabis? And assumed that people would buy it, simply just because it was there. However, as we've seen, that has not turned out to be the case. The world is connected and everyone is sharing ideas and experiences. Modern customers are more educated and after constant bombardment from the abundance of advertising and misinformation, they have developed opinions and biases accordingly. Generally, consumers desire a higher standard of quality and are no longer just content to buy any poor quality product. They may have had that attitude toward the black market offerings in the past, where a limited supply among local suppliers left little to no choice for selection but now there's an abundance of options available. If you've got a product that you want to sell to a particular type of person, then you need to determine what type of person that is and why they are going to choose your product. If you can't provide those simple answers, then you don't have the concept locked in tightly enough for success and are not off to a promising start. At the same time, expanding your vision beyond a singular thought process allows you to fortify your plan and reduce the downside risk. Then if something goes wrong and a particular market strategy doesn't work out, you can determine how to repurpose it and keep going. It's much easier to be able to pivot and continue your business with a restructured backup plan. This will give you an advantage over your competitors whose poor planning could cost them their business in the event of product failure. You also need to accurately determine revenue potential. Simply desiring to earn a certain amount of money is great for morale, but realistic numbers are necessary in a real business with real expenses. Now, you're going to have an overhead and other financial requirements that you may not have had previously, especially if you were in the gray market. More paperwork is necessary, there are licensing fees to be paid, and boxes to be checked off. Doing all the research, properly designing your space, getting into the city... Doing all the research, properly designing the space getting the city on board, having adequate power services, and properly packaging the product. On top of it, laws can change, markets can open up, and competitors can come in. All of these obstacles come into play. They cost more money and take more time. The impact of timeliness itself is another factor that we've observed from working directly on the environmental control side. We've had individuals contact us in a state of urgency and declare that they desperately need a system in two weeks or less, but then months or even years go by before they're actually ready for it. This poor planning is inefficient and should be avoided, so your timeline needs to be set accordingly. Obviously, someone with past experience will already have that advantage, and if you've thought about these things in great depth, you're better prepared with a solid plan for what you're going to do. Another way to ensure that you're on the right path is by keeping costs under control. Naturally, everybody wants next generation LED lighting, movable trays, more power, and the latest equipment in their facility. But that all comes with cost. We certainly don't want to underestimate the value of buying high quality equipment, but in certain situations, as far as power requirements and technologies go, making some trade-offs may be necessary. That's where Excel Air Systems comes in. For example, what's more important, whether your lighting is going to provide a 5-10% to difference on the overall quality of your product, 
or whether your entire crop is moldy or not. Obviously, the latter is the greater concern. Now, some could argue that not using our gear is their trade-off, as they'd rather indulge in fancy gadgetry, like a watering wand. They're entitled to their opinion, but we've had consistent feedback from satisfied customers that Excel Air Systems has provided them with more value and a greater level of control. Someone who spends enough time contemplating this comes to the realization that without environmental control equipment, they wouldn't have that crucial ability to run controlled experiments within their space. They recognize the value of that control and adjust their other expenses accordingly. Again, you need to be conscious about building a real profitable business and not bite off more than you can chew because operating at a negative margin and losing money, while sometimes necessary temporarily for expansion purposes, is not sustainable. Developing and releasing a minimum viable product is also an important step in order to get your brand on the market as soon as you can. Now that doesn't mean simply throwing anything out there to see if it sells, but rather carefully putting out a product of the minimum acceptable quality. Instead of immediately launching a brand with a variety of different experimental strains, simply releasing something that you know you can produce well, which represents and demonstrates your brand's unique attributes. This will allow you to gain some feedback as soon as it starts to sell, which you can learn from to refine the product more precisely. Then you can focus your time, grow from there, and gradually start to expand your offerings. We understand the temptation to try to serve the entire market from day one, especially since trends change so quickly. But this can become overwhelming and a recipe for disaster if issues arise with multiple products. New industries are already under a constant magnifying glass, and cannabis is a fairly new market on a national, statewide, and municipal level, which means that it's being heavily scrutinized. With that considered, it's really important to know the rules and understand what your legal limits are. This way, you can respectfully educate somebody who has any misconceptions or poses any questions while avoiding any hostility. The industry still rubs certain people the wrong way, and they're going to try to hold you accountable for anything that they can. Be fully transparent and give your neighbors in the community a reason to like you, which will help break down barriers about cannabis. Building a business is a long-term process, and what you do today can have a massive impact on how well you are treated tomorrow. Once you are well-regarded, you're going to be one of the few businesses with that distinction posing challenges to other competing ventures. Overall, if you're looking to take your first steps in the cannabis industry, you want to make sure that you're taking smart ones. That will lead you to your success. Discerning and navigating the challenges of this path also involves a considerable amount of wisdom. All right, words of wisdom. Helping cannabis cultivators bring their visions to life has imparted us with a heightened perspective. So we'd like to present you with some words of wisdom that we picked up, which we feel would be beneficial. Ideas are the most important part of creating a business until you actually start to move forward. Then the execution is everything. There's an abundance of great ideas out there, but they can't become successful realities. They aren't properly acted on. Too many people get caught up in their desire to function as idea factories. Metaphorically, the idea level is up in the clouds. Playing in the clouds is great, but you also need to work down in the dirt in order to get somewhere. This means incubating the idea, acting on it, and working hard, which is difficult. Not only does it take a lot of willpower, but also a lot of convincing. When it comes to other people, you're going to have to break through the parts where the process isn't so enjoyable, which unfortunately is most of the time when you're first establishing a business. After the original idea, where you have the rendering facility and projected revenue, you have to start filling out paperwork. That's when bureaucrats are going to throw every obstacle in front of you. What you initially thought would only be a three-month process can turn out to be a multi-year undertaking. During those times, you need to be able to keep stoking the fire, which isn't easy for most people and you can't keep that flame going if you run out of funds. Much like in a poker game, where running out of chips means you're asked to leave the chair. Running out of funds immediately halts a business. The moment you stall or waffle, doubt sets in and investors and employees lose interest. As an entrepreneur, you have to be able to persist and keep moving forward, because nobody's going to give it to you. It's difficult, but it can lead you to great things. If you're not extremely well-versed in all areas of the business, learn it or make sure you have someone on board who is. Now is not the time to wing it, especially in the areas that aren't your strongest. 
Of course, there's always going to be some level of faking it till you make it, but that can't be your main motto or you won't do well. While surrounding yourself with knowledgeable, experienced people can help make the right things happen. You can't always afford that luxury, so try to learn as much as you can. That way, if something doesn't work out, or if you're discussing an issue or idea with someone, you'll have a decent level of understanding. Many people wrongly think that if you don't usually have to deal with something, it isn't worth keeping up with. And if it does arise, they'll easily figure it out then. But that's not how things are likely to go. Having someone on board as a consultant that's at a higher level than just those who can fill in the gaps is even more crucial. That way, if, for example, you're not as well versed on the logistics or growing of facility design, they can help move that vision forward. This involves some self-assessment of your own strengths and weaknesses to figure out what's within your wheelhouse and what you're capable of. We've encountered many individuals who have underestimated these challenges. It's a particularly prominent issue in the cannabis industry because of the black market background that many cultivators and producers come from, where there's nobody making sure they're filling out the paperwork and going through the various legal requirements. Even simple details, like where the product comes from and what its properties are, have to be provided now, or it will not appeal to customers and can't be legally sold. Therefore, the value in having someone who understands the proper protocols cannot be overstated. Another thing we've recommended is to be observant of other companies out there, ones you want to emulate and ones you never want to become. Figuring out what makes them unique gives you perspective on how to make your brand stand out. It doesn't even necessarily have to be in the same market. You might desire the simplicity or playfulness of a certain brand's feel. Look at the characteristics of the brand that you love from the perspective of what you think your prospective customers will identify with and like or dislike about them. You still need to carve out your own directional path, but it's a good place to start from. All of that being said, we want to remind everyone to enjoy the process. As the old adage goes, it's all about the journey, not the destination. In life, we often have certain goals or objectives, which when finally approached seem much smaller than when we originally set them. For that reason, the most successful people upon reaching their goals set new goals to strive for. If you enjoy challenging yourself like this, you will continue to be fulfilled. This will shine through in your work and the quality of your product. Applying this advice will be useful as you make your way through your business operations. Operations. When looking at how you're going to execute business operations, the importance of running a tight ship becomes immediately apparent. Obviously, you need a clear and reasonable vision for installation so that everything comes together as easily as possible. At XLR Systems, we specialize in taking complex things and making them simple. How are we going to help your installation process faster and cheaper? By being preemptive and planning everything beforehand. We don't just supply the gear and size it accordingly. We're also thinking about all the logistics of getting it into the room and keeping it accessible to work on. Then we assist in the formation of a backup plan to protect your crop in the event that something goes wrong. With so many steps, we have to look at how to simplify those operations while still remaining realistic. That also means you can't, for example, say, well, I was taking all these clippings and I did 400 clones in an hour, but I've never worked so hard in my life and used that as a rate of production measurement. Because you later have an employee do the same task, it's highly unlikely that they're going to sustain that speed. That's why XL Air Systems is here to help you streamline the process. We also encourage you to put a considerable amount of energy into de-risking your facility with sealed room technology. A big part of that involves metaphorically planting these seeds and watering them in order to remove those risks later on down the road. For example, a lot of people will start their operation outdoors or in a greenhouse because the amount invested is substantially lower than in a sealed room. The downside is that in these setups there are so many more opportunities for uncontrollable factors to wreak havoc like bad weather, poor lighting, and varying air quality. There's no way to future-proof something like that. Conversely, sealed rooms gives you the ability to remove the impact of these unwanted variables with a regulated environment, while creating the perfect foundation on which controlled experiments can then be conducted. This is revolutionary at any scale. Some people really take advantage of this level of control, but even if you're just thinking about lighting or temperature, being able to run these small batch tests could lead to significant success, 
By keeping your options open, you're investing in the future and your whole business may end up being supported by a product that's grown and run on these technologies. We've unfortunately encountered a lot of closed-mindedness in the industry. The individuals who are stubbornly sticking to the growing method that they've used for 20 years, seemingly unaware or in denial of all the recent technological advancements. On one hand, we understand the comfortability and security of having a tried and true method that works, but their claims that they can't continue to improve while using the method as a base point are easily disproved. The attitude of, that's the way we do it because that's the way we've always done it, will not get anyone anywhere. As growers, you want to get a feedback loop going as fast as possible, and you're going to notice the difference right away. Then after a year's worth of incremental improvements, you can look back and realize just how far you've come. Additionally, protocols and data management will be key to simplifying records, hiring and licensing. This is one of the heaviest burdens on most startup companies, and it's something that many people hate doing. So it's important to consider finding someone with a passion for that line of work and hiring them. While this would prove more time to do the things you actually want to do, you cannot lose sight of the fact that in this business, whether you're operating yet or not, being a dictator is part of what's required in terms of daily operations. This is one of the toughest pills to swallow, but you have to swallow it. When generating business, you have to keep that flywheel spinning without letting it slow down. This means balancing inventory management and tight schedules in terms of what's coming in and what's leaving to ensure that you aren't overly hedged. Continually creating market demand for your product is also really important. When you're busy, you're so busy dealing with the new business that you're not dealing with generating more business. While you may not need new business today, you're going to need it at some point. And if this issue is underestimated, the time it takes to fulfill new orders could be an unacceptable gap. You don't want to go from having a whole team of employees working overtime one day to instructing them to sweep the floor the next, since there's suddenly no real work to be done. Managing your level of supply and demand is greatly affected by the perception and impact of the brand you've created. If executed effectively, driving deeper and continuing to direct people towards your social media channels can result in them going to their local retailer and requesting that they bring in your product. It's important to try to stay as lean as possible while maintaining that tight balance. All of these operational metrics would be pointless without frequently assessing which products are working and which aren't, and you would instead be left chasing the unicorn. What do we mean by that? Well, there's always a popular new cannabis strain since people want to try the latest, greatest trends. While we think it's important to understand where the market is headed and potentially adapt accordingly, you don't want to defy your own principles. At the same time, you can't just say people are going to buy this exact strain forever either. You put a lot of time and effort and deep contemplation to the strains you've chosen to produce in the hopes that they will have some long-term staying power. If you're just jumping onto whatever train is moving at any given time, you better have a schedule constructed to allot for multiple side hustles. Business is about finding that balance. We recommend setting aside about 5% of your growth to experiment with producing new strains, but navigating the landscape of these various attempts would be futile without setting proper benchmarks. As mentioned, our sealed room technology provides an accurate stable platform to run a variety of unique tests. However, if you alter too many variables at one time, you don't actually know what worked and what didn't. We've encountered in individuals who have tried growing a new strain, but it hasn't gone as well as their previous strain grown with the same method. When this has happened, they have overreacted, changed everything and switched out all their equipment, thereby nullifying their experience. They've done this without even knowing if the information or advice they based it on was real and accurate or not. Once again, they were chasing the unicorn. If you were to try and overhaul everything at once, there'd be no way to even know where to begin. Therefore, it's important to be mindful of what you're doing while recognizing that all these cannabis strains are unique. What it comes down to is learning by trial and error. The tighter you get that feedback loop, the more you're able to learn. As long as you're self-evaluating regularly and not just chasing the unicorn, that being said, these operational opportunities wouldn't be possible without having the money to pay for it. Cash is king. What do we mean in stating that cash is king? Although the use of physical cash itself has been in greater decline with digital currencies becoming the norm, we're referring more 
to the necessary role that your financial resources play in retaining control of your creative vision. Playing the startup game and taking the ever-expanding ventured path forged by others with deep pockets is one way, but it really should only be done by those who have a deep understanding. Lots of wealthier individuals are going into venture funds right now and investing in ideas like cannabis companies. As much as it makes sense from the investor's point of view, we strongly advise entrepreneurs against it, urge you to try to come up with the money yourself. The main reason for this is that it focuses your vision a lot more. When people start getting money thrown at them, it's easier to go off on tangents. There's that temptation for frivolous spending, like buying unnecessary gadgetry that does little to advance the growing process. On top of that, nobody treats your stuff like you do. So if it's not yours, you're less inclined to dig deeper and do whatever is necessary to make your business succeed. Therefore, while getting investors is a viable solution, you really have to understand what is happening and what expectations there are. Investors expect you're going to accomplish a certain amount in a certain amount of time and want to see immediate results. They alter your pacing and strategy accordingly, leaving you with little control of the operation. For affirmation, one need only look to the age-old golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. Every dollar that you take from someone else symbolizes more of their say in deciding what you should be doing. If you're using other people's money, you're not in control of your own destiny. Your creative path will be severely compromised. As far as expenditures go, operating within a budget is important. You want to at least get to a break-even point as fast as possible. Then work from there. Don't over leverage in the early stages. This is particularly important for entrepreneurs with smaller startup businesses who dream of becoming the next Canopy Growth or Aurora Cannabis. They could very well get there one day, but it takes time. Otherwise, if they stretch the budget and spend everything right away, they end up with nothing left. Run out of options and their business dies. Having cash and resources provides those options, so it's important to proceed with caution and not rush things. Expect downtime. Factor that in as part of your time schedule. Don't be fearful and don't be naive either. Expect things to go wrong. What's going to happen if and when something else happens and how are you going to address it? Think it through. Have some reserves and a backup plan because you're likely going to run into obstacles so significant that they will define whether you're even going to stay in business or not. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, 65% of new businesses fail in the first 10 years. A big part of that is because once they've made it past the initial stages where everything is fun, interesting, and fast-moving, things can become monotonous and stressful with hiring and firing and products not selling as expected. Eventually, there's a period where it all becomes too much or you push through to that break-even point. From there, you can begin to grow profitably. Throughout this process, look for opportunities that unlock value for your business. There's a lot of value in synergies and partnerships, especially in the cannabis industry, with so many unique restrictions on marketing and promotions. Partnering with other similarly-minded entities in such a connected society allows you to share ideas, cross-market, and thrive. For example, partnering with a business that sells cannabis accessories in a similarly branded manner and helping each other facilitate interaction could prove beneficial to promoting your brand and operation, but nothing should be done hastily without investigation. Even a small amount of research and development can go a long way. Truly unique opportunities will take some time to develop and grow, so it's important to be realistic and start planting the seeds of innovation early. Going forward, remain in touch with the industry. Keep an open mind to new ideas and continue to grow. Reserve time for new developments and running site experiments because what stems from those unconventional attempts can end up becoming your predominant revenue generator. You want to be able to invent the future because that's what's going to give your business that longevity and sustain your success. In closing, when reflecting on everything that you've covered across this webinar, it's important to remember that there are so many exciting things on the horizon for the cannabis industry. This isn't just true in our area of expertise, the hardware side, with innovative new systems, add-ons, and accessories, but throughout the market as a whole. All of the events, political efforts, and legal changes that are happening worldwide make up a long-term march that's steadily nearing the top of the summit. Though we currently, predominantly, have legalization at different municipal levels, with federal legalization in only a handful of countries, we're seeing a continual shift in that direction. 
state by state, province by province, country by country. Most recently, we've seen six more U.S. states come on board with legislative changes. The United Nations reclassified cannabis a separate category from its list of high-risk narcotics. More recently, the general consensus has shifted to view cannabis more through the lens of its numerous medicinal properties, thereby opening up greater research opportunities, as opposed to when scientists were hardly allowed to go near it. Lots of cool stuff can stem from these developments, especially with consumable cannabis 2.0 products, ranging from new beverages to effective topical creams. Every breakthrough becomes another jump-off point, so the future is looking very bright overall. That being said, with sunshine comes some rain. There will, of course, still be some rough times requiring competence, business sense, and resourceful planning to survive and thrive. But that's because this is uncharted territory, and we're making new strides every day. After all, that's part of the excitement. Everything is constantly changing and evolving, so you're going to have these ups and downs. Establishing a cannabis operation can be challenging, but if you get it right, it can be very profitable. XL Air Systems is here to act as your support, providing you with the equipment and resources you need to succeed, while reminding you to treat it like a business, not lose focus, keep going, and enjoy the journey. Right now, we want to be respectful of everyone's time and express our sincere appreciation to you, your continued interest and attention. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our insights with you. It's been pleasant. Please feel free to reach out at your earliest convenience and send us an email with any questions that you may have or visit www.xlairsystems backslash snapshot to fill out a snapshot form so that we can gain a better understanding of your situation to help you better.